Wales to Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. Let's meet the gentleman in charge of proceedings for this game two in the NHL Soviet Series 85-86. The referee will be Kerry Fraser. And the linesman, Sweet Knox and Randy Mitten. The starting goaltender for Central Red Army, 27-year-old Sergei Malinkov. Malinkov, a winner in game one against the Los Angeles Kings last evening, and he looks to make it two in a row. And for the Edmonton Oilers, it'll be 25-year-old Andy Moog. A goals against average of 3.41 in the win column, 15. Four losses, four ties. Moog has never lost to the Soviets. He was a winner in 1982-83, but then again, Howie, he has only played against the Soviets on one occasion, at least at this level. Well, I'll tell you, John, if he plays up to the form he just played during that uh, six or eight weeks that uh, Grant Gurr was out with that bad injury, uh, I saw him play three or four times, and he was just sensational. Stayed in his feet, challenged, didn't guess, and made stops that uh, kept the Edmonton Oilers in the game until their big lines broke loose. And I got a feeling we're going to see just some hockey game here tonight, folks. There's something about it, Howie. This has often been called a quiet building, the Northlands Coliseum, but I can remember a couple of occasions when the Soviets and that Team Canada and the Edmonton Oilers on other occasions where the building has come to life. Well, the Soviet games, as you said a moment ago, I think just brings out the best, not only in our players, but in our fans across the country. Uh, I listen or, to the national anthem being sung in most of the buildings across Canada, and everybody stands there and yawns. It's not like that in the United States. And it wasn't, folks, like that here tonight. Most of the people joined in and uh, were singing the national anthem. So let's go, guys. And I think you're going to be in for a great treat. The thing that you have to watch and appreciate more than anything else when you're watching that uh, Soviet club tonight is their puck handling at high speed. They're just magicians with the puck, and if they live up to their reputation, uh, particularly what I think about them, their passing is going to be great. It's a pleasure to welcome our American viewers tonight who are viewing us from coast to coast in the United States on ESPN. Underway at the Coliseum, game two of the 85-86 series. The Edmonton Oilers tonight against Central Red Army. The Soviets forcing the Oilers into their zone early in the opening seconds of the game. Out there for the Soviets, Makarov, Tiumenov, and Kutov. Kutov is number nine. Up and over the boards, and a stoppage in play. And at the Soviet bench, the man in charge of proceedings is Viktor Tikhonov. How well, they say he's in a little bit of hot water back home for uh, Soviets international I, play of late. I don't believe it for a second. Good hockey coaches, uh, managers of people uh, who can teach discipline and produce winning teams are just as scarce as Gretzky's. And uh, the Soviets aren't dumb. They're not going to get rid of a big asset that they have. Soviets get it out across their line. That's Krutov, number nine, flipping it back to Gusarov. Now it's ahead on the right side to Tiamenev. And he can't get anywhere in the neutral zone. Coffee moves up for the Oilers. Who add a little pressure to the Soviets. Gretzky along the boards. Banks it in just across the line, up and over the boards at the Soviet bench and in amongst the spectators once more. With just a minute gone in the opening period. Glenn Sather looks forward to these international confrontations. I'm sure fond memories of the Canada Cup last year. But he says he can learn just a little bit about how he might improve his team and his game plan and strategy by meeting clubs like this, and I guess that makes sense. It certainly does, and I'll have more to say about him later on. Just a great hockey man. Fogelin for the Oilers, rips it in. Moving in for Edmonton. Ramos Suman and number 25, McClellan. Got it back for Fogelin, and Fogelin cleared it in behind the Soviet goal. Petasov, number two. Got it to the line, it's out. Chance for the Soviets here as Pikov goes down, drops it back, neatly played by the Soviets. And it was blocked out in front by Kevin Lowe. McClellan covers for the Oilers. And McSorley got it across the line for Edmonton into the neutral zone. Soviets quickly back in. Working right in that time was Bykov, 19. And Fedosov back for Central Red Army. His pass for Gerasimov, number 12. Still with the puck, Gerasimov to the other line. Plays it off 
on the left wing. It comes back to Baikov. Fired wide. Gerasimov, number 12, forced back into his own zone. McTavish is out there for the Oilers, number 14, to the line. And the shot. Malinkov, an easy save. And he hangs on for a whistle. Face off in the Soviet zone. Well, they tonight, folks, without a doubt, the Gretzky, Curry, and Anderson line are going to be the ones that are going to have to supply a heck of a lot of the offense with the skating, the puck handling, and the chances on goal. It's the McClellan line, the McTavish line, and Rogers, and the supporting cast on defense are going to have to win this or keep the Edmonton Oilers close with their constant bodily contact. The second they go to a Soviet player and they don't finish the check and take the man, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to have to play the best checking game they've ever played in their life in order for them to win tonight. There's a penalty coming up, elbowing spotted by Gary Brazier down there. You didn't like the call, did you? I didn't like the call, but I, what I wanted to say is that to be able to do all those things I just mentioned to go play the tough part of the game, not the easy part of the game, but uh, play it tough without taking penalties. And you can't take penalties uh, without the Soviet club taking advantage of it. They have a great power play, great puck control. It looked a little innocent, but the elbow was definitely up. Gretzky is out there now, along with Coffey and Curry and Charlie Huddy to kill out the penalty. Soviet power play, first advantage of the hockey game for the Central Red Army. Back to the Soviets. Starkiov. He's number three. Plays it off on the right side. For Zubin, 25. Coffey claims it on the boards. Soviets have a chance. Shepelev, the save, Andy Mode. Gretzky claims the rebound, banks it. And it comes right to the point. Gretzky didn't get much on that one, trying to clear it out of his zone. Soviets out in front on the power play. Back to the line. Good work by Coffey along the boards. He forced it. Curry has it. Coffey. In for Curry. He was offside. Well, I'm sure you're sitting at home watching this hockey game. Uh, Edmonton Oilers kill the penalty. It comes to Coffey in the corner. He whips it around the board. Three-quarter speed. Oops the wrong colored guy a red jersey and then uh, a few minutes later after Moog made himself a great big save Gretzky gets it and poops a high fly into short center field and uh, the defenseman stayed right there and picked it up there it is what I'm talking about right here Gretzky had time to make an intelligent play get it out of his own end you can't move it from a white sweater to a red sweater without it hurting you in the long haul can't give the puck away in your own zone especially against this club a minute 19 seconds left in the Soviet power play Don Jackson in the penalty box for the Edmonton Oilers. Gusarov for the Soviets. Central Red Army out and across the line into the Oilers zone. Flipped in by Makarov. Chance for Gretzky. Couldn't catch up with it. Now comes up with the puck behind the Soviet goal. Gretzky working along the boards. He's pushed off the puck. It's picked up by Krutov. Number nine, Krutov starts back for the Soviets. Ahead on the right side for Tiumenev. Working in, can't get a shot away. This is Krutov, back to the line. Getting set for the shot. The save, Moog. A rebound, and Moog got a piece of it. Back to the line once more, Gusarov, number five. Curry tried to force him out across the line for the Soviets now. Tiamena, blocked out in front by the Oilers. Gretzky controls and clears for Edmonton. Scoreless in the opening period, the Oilers in Central Red Army. 18 seconds left in the Soviet power play. Makarov now. To the Oiler line. Feathers one in neatly. Moog played it to the corner. Four seconds left in the power play. The Oilers have weathered the storm as Jackson steps onto the ice. Soviets to the Edmonton line. Into the corner. Picked up by Veselov, number 11. Got it out in front. No one there. Back to the line, working in. Fedosov, number two. This is Hunter. Ahead for McTavish. McTavish couldn't get it for Napier. Soviets to the Canadian line, to the Euler line. Vasiliev couldn't take a pass, number 23. Vasilov, number 11, couldn't hold it in for Central Red Army. And Fedosov is back for the Soviets. Yeah. 
And across the Euler line, this is Gerasimov, number 12, ridden out by Randy Gregg. Gerasimov still has the puck, trying to get it out front. Gregg is in there, along with Mike Rogers, 19, Gerasimov. Got it back out in front, chance, fired just wide. Moog, a little lucky there. It fired just wide, and came out Moog, covered up on the rebound. Scoreless in the first in Edmonton. Live on the Sports Network, TSN, the Edmonton Oilers and Central Red Army, game two of the 85-86 Soviet NHL series. For the Soviets, Baikov, 19 at center. Gerasimov, number 12 on the right side, and Kamutov, number 15 on the left. Claim for the Oilers by Shervin, 28. Tough work along the boards. Going in to help out Mike Rogers. Oilers lose it in their own zone, out in front. Cleared to the line and kept in by Gerasimov. Kamutov to... Baikov, he tried to get it out in front. That shot blocked by Mike Rogers. Dave Semenko for the Oilers, one man to beat. Semenko doesn't have a lot of speed, dropped it back, and the Soviets cover up neatly as Baikov turns around and heads the other way. Over for Kamutov. Now, Baikov in the corner, 19. Kamutov goes in to help the Oilers come up with it in their own zone. This is Don Jackson for Edmonton. Tries a rink-wide pass. For Shervin, Shervin couldn't come up with it. Kevin Lowe over on the right side. Semenko couldn't take a pass in the center zone. Icing called against the Soviets. They'll take it all the way back. Well, folks, we've got something to show you here that the Soviets will constantly try to do, and they're very, very successful at it. What they'll try is to get the Edmonton Oilers playing in this part of the rink. The puck will go around in this area here. Now, just watch how it develops. Now, you get four Edmonton Oilers in that part of the rink, and it's dumped back again. And they stay in that part. Now, stop it right here. Stop it right here. Here's the Edmonton Oilers. Look at in this part of the rink here and here. Okay, now, let it go. Watch the pass up to the men and the hash marks on the, on the boards. Now, there's that great pass, and it's a two-on-one break. They manufacture those two-on-one breaks. Back to the live action. Gretzky is out there with Anderson and Curry. The forward front for the Oilers. Low, number four. Back on defense. Anderson has to go back. Plays it back for Kevin Lowe. Low ahead to the central ice area. Soviets cross the line. Gusarov takes a big hit from Lee Fogelin. Here come the Oilers. Anderson with Gretzky. Got away from a check. At least got away from it partially. And we got elbows up again. This time against the Soviets. Well, what you saw a few moments ago, folks, is what the uh, Edmonton Oilers have to do. Finish the check. Don't throw the stick at these Soviet players, because if you do, oh, ho 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 you'll be looking at a lot of hot air, big wind, and nothing else. Just finish the check on them consistently and you stand a chance. Here's the penalty. Yes, he did get the elbow up. Uh, he keeps both hands on the stick. It's not a penalty at all. He keeps the elbow down. Still now number 21. 708 elbowing. Oilers' first power play opportunity of this hockey game. The Soviets had one and it remains scoreless at this stage. 1252 to play in the first period. This is Huddy for the Oilers. Huddy back for Paul Coffey. Coffey lost it. Soviets. Kutov tipped it out neatly. This is Curry. Charlie Huddy. Glenn Anderson. Anderson away on the right side. Couldn't get around Kutov. I was surprised there. Anderson obviously was going to take the Soviet player and create a loose puck. And for a change, Coffee backed off. Usually he's right in the corner. Oilers on the power play. Curry into the corner. Anderson in quickly. Couldn't come up with it. Soviets dump it all the way down. Oh, Anderson has to come up with that puck. There's no way in the world he can make a half-hearted effort like that and uh, let the Soviets shoot it out. Bad pass from Paul Coffey, who was looking for Curry. It goes all the way down. Gretzky and after it can't come up with it. Neither can Anderson. He overskated it. Soviets shorthanded, remember. Curry back-checking. Claims it for the Oilers. This is Coffey to the line. Paul Coffey. 
sharp angle. Easy save for Malinkov. I was surprised he didn't challenge John. Coffee had a, not a bad angle, not a good one either, but he just stayed back in the net and played the shot. There was a little room, Howie. Played it well, though. 39 seconds left in the other power play. Across the line, this is Napier. In behind the Soviet goal, Randy Gregg dumps it back in. Gets past Gregg and rolls out across the line. Oiler power play has not been effective. Dave Hunter. Got it out in front. Soviets claim it there and start back. 11.07 to play. In the opening period, the Soviets on the move. Led by Babinov. Babinov, number four, around behind the Edmonton goal. Tried to clear it over to the other side. And going for it this time is Vasiliev, 23. He got it back to the line, across the a a stick. And the Soviets regroup and dump it right back into the Oilers' zone. Central Red Army now back to full strength as the Oilers come out of their zone. McTavish dumped it in for Edmonton. Napier with a puck now. McTavish. Close quarters in there for Napier. He's being checked by Stelnov, number 21. Now McTavish comes up with it for Edmonton. Hunter can't control it. Neither can Fogelin at the point. Puck finally loose. Vasilov, number 11 for the Soviets. Now it's held for a whistle in the Soviet zone. Midway mark of period number one. It is scoreless. The Edmonton Oilers and Central Red Army. Face off in the Soviet zone. Ten minutes to go in the opening period. Still scoreless. Oilers in the Central Red Army. Big save for Malinkov right after the face off. You know what? So far, we've played 10 minutes, and I don't think it's been a good hockey game other than the first shift of the doggone thing, and maybe the Soviets and the power play pre played real well. I just think the players are a little tentative. There have been two very, very cheap penalties. All of a sudden, they've got the idea, hey, this is a, a freewheeling, wide-open game, no bodily contact, and I'm not going to run at anybody and get a penalty. They're not playing all out out there. Not, not so yet. far, Howie. Not yet. But you said the Soviets wouldn't be tired. They're not tired. McClellan tried to clear it into the Soviet zone. And coming out with it, the Soviets to the oiler line. Baikov, 19. Tried to find an open man on the right side. Kamuta, 15, goes after it. Couldn't get to it. Kamuta. And it's back into the Soviet zone. Malinkov clears it around. Oilers get control to the side of the net. Picked up by Sumanen. Now it goes for the Soviets once more, who start back, led by Gerasimov. Good drop pass. Good save by Andy Moog from Kenyatov, number 15. Moog had to be sharp on that one. Another chance for the Soviets. Moving in, Gerasimov. Off a leg, out in front. Another save by Moog and batted away. Back to the line. And the Soviets keep it in. This is Asatanov, number six. Oilers were lucky to come out of that one. Moog. Had to make a couple of big saves. This is Huddy. Riding out Kasatonov, number six for Central Red Army. For the Oilers now. Sherman, 28 along the boards. It comes back to him. Look for an open wing. No one there. Semenko after it. So is Drozdetsky, number 13. Nice pass in the center ice area. Sheffield left 27. Good pass going in. Moog, brilliant save. And on the rebound, they score. Moog. Made the initial save. And on the rebound, the Soviets have taken the lead. Well, what, a, what a great, great pass. Right, watch this pass here. Puts the player home free. He just walks around the outside, and Moe comes out with a stick check, but didn't have a chance in the world to get back up to control the rebound or make a save on the rebound. The Soviets came close to scoring on two occasions before that. And Moog made unbelievable saves, but the second you let up on them, the second you don't stay with your man against these fellas, and it was Zubin who put the puck in the net. Alexander Zubin gives the Soviets the lead at 1-0. With eight minutes to play in the opening period, Moog had to make a couple of big saves just prior to that, and he made one but couldn't cover up on the rebound. He was hopelessly out of position. 
Trailing 1-0, the Oilers start back. Gretzky can't take a pass at the Soviet line. And quickly, Central Red Army to the attack. This is Zubin, 25. Now Shepelev. Off a leg, the shot ricochets into the corner. And a penalty coming up. Something else, John, uh, quality shots. I can't remember the Oilers having won yet. They're not really playing with the jump that uh, they should be having. Here's this uh, save that Andy uh, oh, he didn't make it. That's, oh, that's the penalty in front of the net, and uh, can't understand why he took that penalty on the attack. Two things stand out in my mind over it. Just how well the Soviets are playing defensive hockey. They're just taking everything away from the Edmonton Oilers, particularly in their own end. Their discipline is just outstanding. They're not giving anybody a scoring chance, even the, the Gretzky-Anderson line uh, when they were on the ice with a man advantage. And the other thing is on offense. They used to have their shot at the net, give up and let you bring it out. Not anymore. They pursue. They do some checking. They make an attempt to control the corners. And the other thing is they're playing a little tougher. A little tougher. On the power play for the Oilers, this is Paul Coffey. For the Soviet line and in, Gretzky around behind the net. Can't come up with it. Pinching in. That time, Huddy couldn't come up with it for the Oilers. Soviets have it now. Gusarov, content to dump it into the neutral zone. Hops over Coffey stick and all the way down. Minute 33 left in the Oilers power play. Second opportunity on the power play for the Oilers. This is Yari Curry. Curry around behind the net. Anderson claims it there. Glenn Anderson trying to get it for Gretzky. That play doesn't work. Soviets are doing something that the national teams don't do. Uh, usually on the power play, Gretzky gets as far as he possibly can from the action. The puck comes to him. The Soviets are putting someone with him. Coffee dumps it in once more. Gretzky is after it. Soviets dump it all the way down across Huddy's stick. And Moog has to come out of his net to play it. Makarov, 24, was in for the Soviets. Chance for the Oilers here. This is Hunter. Hunter left it at the line for Kevin Lowe. Lowe overskated it but controlled it. In for Gretzky behind the net. Gretzky back for Hunter. He didn't see it coming. And the Soviets able to clear it leisurely down the ice. Moog out to set it up for Randy Gray. Hunter tipped it in. Malinkov had to make the save. Kept in at the line by Greg. Couldn't take a return pass. He was out of position. Soviets missed an opportunity. Vasiliev, 23, had a chance. 14 seconds left in the Oilers power play. Kevin Lowe flips it into the Soviet zone. Icing called. Mark Napier couldn't get there quickly enough. So one second left in the penalty to Drozdetsky. Soviets, Central Red Army, leading the Edmonton Oilers 1-0. Asaf is in the Edmonton Oilers zone. Central Red Army leading by a goal. 5.37 to play in period one. At center ice for the Soviets. Mykov, number 19. He's out there with Gerasimov, number 12. Kevin Lowe controls for the Oilers. McTavish got it to the Soviet line, but not across. Hunter has some problems. Now it's back for Lee Fogelin. Babinov, number four for Central Red Army. That pass goes astray. Hunter can't take a pass in the neutral zone. And the Soviets start in. This is Kamutov. And Gerasimov out in front, back to the line. Good opportunity for the Soviets as they move in. Kamutov can't control behind the Edmonton line. And the Oilers come up with it. Over on the right side for Napier. He's ridden out of the play by Babinov. Jackson to the line and across for Edmonton. In behind the Soviet goal. McClellan is out in front. Randy Gregg moving in. Can't get a shot away. Gregg flips it into the corner. Still controlling it for Edmonton. Starikov for the Soviets. Working against McClellan. 
Moving in Suminen, number 25 for Edmonton. Now the Soviet, Baikov. Gerasimov starts the Soviets out, taking a return pass now. Suminen for the Oilers to the line and across. Dropped it for McSorley. McSorley going in, takes that score! McSorley had some trouble with it too. How he caught up and escaped. Well, it was a great drop pass and it held the Soviet defense right there. Watch this. He had two Soviet defensemen, particularly that left guy, chasing him as he cut across in front. And the drop pass was misplayed first by McSorley, but boy, he just kicked it off his skate. Look at there, right up on his stick. And then he pissed, picked the far corner. And I am very much surprised again that. Malinkov did not challenge. He was backing up. And the shot was made by McSorley. He was backing up, and that just opened up that far corner. Simonen draws the only assist at 16-13. Greg gets one as well. I'm sorry about that. Simonen and Greg setting up McSorley. It is even at one, period one. Oilers come to life just a little bit with three minutes, 27 seconds to play in the opening period. It has been slow at times, but the Oilers have a little life after getting even at one. Well, that should bring... There's Paul Coffey, and folks, it's just a pleasure to do the amount of games that I do here in Edmonton and see this guy play. He's probably as good a skater as ever played in the National Hockey League, and there are times I say he's even better than the great Bobby Orr. He's a wonderful entertainer. Just give him two strokes and zip, zip, and he's gone. And uh, he hits full stride in about, oh, three strokes at the very most. And then when he gets to the opposition's blue line, he starts to coast and passes everybody. He's not uh, got under a full head of steam tonight, not really played that well yet, but give him a chance. Great, it, great, great hockey player. Paul Coffey will be with Jim Van Horn in our first intermission. And one thing he can do, the knock on the guy, is that he can't play defense. That's not right. When he wants to, he can play defense, play well behind the blue line. As good as anybody. Semenko had a chance right from the face off. Didn't have anything on it. Fired it wide. Soviets on the move once more. Makarov still has it ridden out by Paul Coffey. Semenko got it out across the line and it dribbled back in. Well, there he had an excellent chance to see Coffey's uh, lateral mobility. He just made the turn and that Soviet player put about seven moves on him. And uh, he took the puck off him and advanced it up to the uh, Edmonton Oilers player in the blue line. He can transform the game from defense to offense as quick as anybody who ever played. I, I looked at the problem, I think, so far in this first period with the Oilers is they're putting sticks where bodies should go. The uh, supporting cast really has to get out there and uh, take the man. That's Lee Bogelin after it. To you, men off. The Soviets goes in number 28. And it'll be icing called against Central Red Army. It is even at one with 2.47 left in the opening period. Victor T. Umanev. How'd I do, Howie? Very good. I'll tell you what, uh, I have trouble with his name, but he is quite some hockey player. He can skate. And uh, another thing I've noticed is that the moves that the potential pass receiver has that he uses in order to beat the check. I just think he'd go... Or, to beat his check. You'd go cross-eyed watching them, and uh, when you're sitting at home, just watch it if the camera picks it up. They're amazing. They don't give up without making four, five, or six moves. Kevin Lowe for the Oilers. Quickly over for Gretzky. He couldn't control the pass. Fedosov for the Soviets. 1-1, first period. Two minutes, 25 seconds to play. Chance for Gretzky. Oh! Malinka made the save. Gretzky was out in front all by himself. And he had a little behind that one. The kid's got to be lucky. Watch Gretzky wind up. Now he starts down right there. Look at, he's on his way down and was just, uh, well, wasn't quite as high as I thought it was from up in here. Made a, made a pretty good save. But he gave Gretzky, I stayed on his feet, gave him all kinds of time until he started to come through, follow through, and then started down. Had to be a little higher, he'd had problems. Yari Curry kept it in at the line. Curry in for Gretzky. Bouncing off his stick and in amongst the spectators. 
Gretzky was already moving on that one, Howie. Yeah, but uh, certainly Curry uh, made the pass to Gretzky. Gretzky couldn't put it in from the position he was at, and this Soviet team just picked up Gretzky and, and also picked up Curry, and Curry was checked. When you get in that position on this hockey club, shoot the puck. Any hockey club, but particularly this one. Vasilyev and Vasilyev out there with Gamayev. Gamayev at center, number 18 for the Soviets. This is Vasilyev, 23, going into the corner. Can't get anywhere. Anderson for the Oilers. For Curry, Don Jackson and back to Curry. Randy Gregg now out in front. Jackson banks it off the boards. Gretzky was well covered. Had two Soviets with him, but Gretzky somehow got away. The puck is right back to him. To the line across. Here's Anderson going in. Malinka. Got a pad on it. Andy Moog at the other end. The save that time on Gamayev. And the net is off. It's Mooring down there. Moog a big save at the other end. Well, two things. That fellow you're looking at there has a uh, reputation of sleepwalking uh, through shifts, through periods, and he has so far. But watch uh, right here. The puck was bounced. Had that puck been on his stick, and he stayed in control. The other thing here is look where Andy Moog is. He's been that far out all night long. He knows the Soviets. Once they get it in the deep, deep slot or anywhere in front of the net, they've changed their style. They don't overpass anymore. They'll shoot the puck, and Moog has made four or five excellent saves tonight for no other reason than the fact that he's cheating a foot or two. Oilers ahead for Mark Napier. Still with the puck, Napier crosses the Soviet line. Tried to get it for McTavish. McTavish skating in after it. And Gusharov for the Soviets, number five, comes up with it. Soviets starting out. This is Baikov, 19, takes the shot. Moog the save. See where he was there again. There's no way in the world Lowe got caught pinching. And the second you get caught pinching, that's a two-on-one. And a two-on-one with this club. Guaranteed, folks. The goaltender has to make a great, great save. And that guy you're looking at there, Andy Moog, has made seven or eight. Baikov, number 19 at center for Central Red Army. Gerasimov, number 12 on the right side. And Kenyutov, 15 on the left wing. Base off will be to the left of Andy Moog. It's even at one with just a minute, three seconds to play in the opening period. Soviets have outshot the Oilers 10 to four. I would think good scoring chances too, uh, at least 10 to, 10 to two. Kevin Lowe for Napier. He couldn't bring it home. Medesov for the Soviets. Baikov couldn't control. Lee Fogelin along the boards. McTavish for Edmonton tries to kick it free, but it's held there. Face off in that centralized zone with 44 seconds to play. We're at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. I might have, uh, what, emphasized a little too much scoring chances 10 to 4. I would think shots from a chance where the, uh, the puck has a chance to go in. The Soviets have had uh, 10 or 12 excellent uh, shots from that area. I can only remember one or two by uh, Edmonton Oilers. Oilers slow coming out of their own zone. Finally, Fogelin got it ahead for Napier. He couldn't control it. In after it, Dave Hunter for Edmonton. Petasov comes up with it for Central Red Army. His pass on the right side, Jarasimov couldn't control. All the way down with 19 seconds left in the first period. And they'll take it back to the Soviet zone for one rather critical faceoff at the stage of the hockey game. Well, I don't know. The Oilers haven't been <laughs> too impressive in the Soviet uh, defensive zone so far this evening. Uh, again, I have to go back to the fact that, gee whiz, they, they've uh, there never was any doubt about their ability to play the game with the puck, to play on offense. But they have sharpened up their game uh, defensively to an extent now. They play defense as good as anybody. Jackson kept it in. That's Gretzky in behind the Soviet gold. Ten seconds left in the period, and that should just about wrap things up. As the Oilers control in their own zone, Jackson, one of the speediest Oilers, won the foot race there and controlled long enough to kill time on the clock. And after one, all even. Shots on goal by the Soviets, 10 to 4. 
And on the scoreboard, 1-1. Howie, there were moments in the period, but it wasn't uh, maybe quite what we're used to in Soviet NHL competition. A little slow and lethargic at times. Well, I don't doubt for a moment, folks, that it'll, that it'll pick up, and I would think maybe the Edmonton Oilers, as I said earlier, that they got a penalty, uh, had a couple of dirty looks from the official about uh, continuing on and taking out the man and raising the stick a little bit and the elbow a little bit, and I think that uh, kept them away from bodily contact. Your NHL season. We'll take a break. Uh, go back to Toronto. During summary, the Soviets open things up at the 11.47 mark. Alexander Zubin from Drozdetsky and Shepel have made it one to nothing, but Marty McSorley came back for the orders on a nice setup from Ramo Sumanen and Randy Gregg at 16-13 to tie the game at one. There you see the shots. Army over the Oilers, 10 to 4. Andy Moog. And now Jimmy, we won't be too hard on the two teams. Uh, I think that a lot can happen in the second period. Both teams can come out and be very explosive, and uh, maybe just a period of feeling each other out a little bit. Howie, well, I think the Soviets played pretty close to their potential. I am a little bit disappointed in the the enthusiasm, the lack of jump, uh, the lack of foot. Uh, a lack of checking by the Edmonton Oilers. They can play that type of game, the type of game that they have to play against uh, a smooth skating, uh, slick passing club like the Soviet team. And at the end of the period, uh, I said, you can't tell one line from another on that Soviet club. They all look to be the same. They all look to have the same uh, so much skills balance. and finesse. Yeah, yeah, they keep throwing three and sometimes four lines at you. And any one of them can beat you with the long pass. And uh, I guess put it in the net as well. They're a very impressive hockey club. They're fun to watch. Tiumenov at center ice for the Soviets with Makarov number 24 and Krutov number 9 as his wingers out there against Gretzky, Curry, and Anderson. Second period action underway. This is Yari Curry for the Oilers. Anderson gets it across the line, can't catch up to it, and is picked up by Krutov number 9. I think a little earlier, too, I was talking about Anderson. Uh, I said he's known to have a, a period or a shift that he uh, doesn't play too well in, but he usually wakes up in the second period. Lee Fogren, I'll tell you, he's just played some great, great hockey this past year, and for all the years he's been here in Edmonton, uh, he's brutally strong, folks. There's no other word, brutally strong. When he lays that piece of lumber on your hand or on your knee or on your uh, wrist, you are in trouble. And nobody goes around the outside of him at all, and he's playing, I think, much cuter with the puck. He's moving it better than he ever did before. Just about as steady as they come in the NHL. That's Hogan. right. That's right. And just a heck, a heck of a guy. He's got more skills than his old man had, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and all, he's almost as tough as the old man. Face off in the Soviet zone. It is 1-1. Second period just nicely underway. As the Soviets control in their own territory, Makarov tries a right side pass. This is Tia Menov, number 28. Back for Makarov. Going in. Takes the shot. Mode the save. Looked a little bit surprised by the angle of the shot. Makarov backhands it out in front. Huddy for the Oilers. Claims it there. Now Curry. Oilers slow coming out of their zone. Banked off the boards. Gretzky leaves it. Curry goes in after it. Red Army to the attack. This is Tia Menov. Krutov, number nine. Can't get anywhere. Curry. Just a little too far, the pass for him that time. Soviets dump it right back into the Oilers zone. Coffee now for Edmondson. Tried Gretzky in the central ice area. He couldn't control it. Coffee for Anderson. That didn't work. Gretzky picks it up. Backhand pass to Curry. Curry couldn't slip through the defense, couldn't control the pipe. Curry has to go back into his own end. He's probably by far the best defensive hockey player, best defensive forward on the Edmonton Oilers. When he runs up ahead, he's standing still. He doesn't do anything constructive. But when he goes deep in his own end and then comes late, oh, ho, ho, it's just murder. He's a great hockey player. Tonight, he's standing and waiting for the defenseman to give him the puck in the center ice area. There's a guy who's playing great hockey for all you people in the Montreal area. Just, just never gives the puck away. Up and down his wing. Does so many little things right. He's an excellent, excellent checker. And give him half a chance, and he'll put the puck in the net. He has been a great addition. Uh, Second or third line player for this Edmonton Oilers hockey club. Ten-year NHL veteran. I remember I used to go into Toronto and he played with the old Toronto Torals just to see that kid shake, rattle, and roll. My goodness, could <laughs> he skate. Oh, never saw a better skater. At 17 and 18, he could fly. Napier along the boards. Lost it momentarily, but it comes to the Oilers. This is Rogers. Rogers for Don Jackson. Jackson got it out in front. The Soviets are quick to cover up. Oh, Jackson's a little mad. Uh, someone took his feet from underneath him and he kicked at him. 
McTavish lasted along the boards. Soviets control in the Oilers zone. Moog had to make a save and a point shot from Kasatanov. Kasatanov kept it in at the line. McTavish couldn't get it out. 14 for the Oilers. For the Soviets, Kamutov, 15. It is finally out across the line. And back in, whistle down. The faceoff will be just outside the Oiler line. At 1-1, 1740 to play in the second period. You know, flooding the zone uh, since uh, the last seven or eight years in the National Hockey League, and I guess it's particularly being developed because of playing the European teams, uh, has been copied and uh, done very, very well by NHL clubs and all Canadian and American hockey teams at whatever level. But watch the Soviets tonight. They flood a zone tighter and with more people than I've ever seen before. So far, they haven't got burned. McTavish for the Oilers across the line. That play broken up neatly. Soviets start right back. Drozdetsky is open. Number 13. It doesn't go that way. Drozdetsky into the corner as Shepilev took the shot. This is Shepilev for the Soviets. Out in front. Nobody there. Goes to the sideboards. Zubin. 25 for Central Red Army. Couldn't control. Babinov. Ahead for Drozdetsky, 13. And it's back out across the Oiler line. A penalty coming up against the Oilers. Looks like Hunter, number 12, for tripping as Andy Moog touches it behind his own goal. Hunter, guilty of tripping. The Oilers will be a man short. Even at one in period two. There's Hunter getting a very, very foolish penalty. And I'm not... Oh, gee whiz. The Soviets can do it too, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked a little one, innocent. One hand and just laid it on his knee and down he went. Well, they're pretty good learners. <laughs> on the power play for the Soviets, kept in at the line by Gusarov. Number five, back to him now, and it hops across his stick. Soviets have Tiumenov, 28, Makarov, 24, and Krutov, 9, out of the power play. For the puck right now, Gusarov. This is Krutov, Krutov. Easily across the other line. Took a pretty good check from Charlie Huddy. Soviets control on the power play in the other zone. Man out in front. Open still now. Fired it wide. Oilers oh. dump it down. Can't understand that point, man. The defenseman moved in the top of the circle. Nobody to block the shot, and he made a pass. Got to shoot the puck. Makarov for Central Red Army now. Across the other line. Left it there for Krutov. He works into the corner. Back to the line. Fedosov. Gretzky was there, made the play, and backhanded it down the ice. I'm surprised Fedosov just didn't put that puck in the air. Nice little six-foot pass in the air, and they, it's over Gretzky's stick, and Oilers are in trouble. He put it along the ice. This is McTavish for the Oilers. Anderson can't catch up to it. Number nine, McTavish pinches in, keeps it in for the Oilers. That's Satana, number six, for the Soviets now. Pass on the right side for Kamutov. And you top number 15, ridden out by Jackson Moog out to steer it along the boards. And the Oilers get it down the ice. Here's a chance for Edmonton. McTavish is open. Anderson couldn't get it there. Still couldn't. Metasov. Now Kasatanov, number six, plays it over to the right side. Gerasimov, number 12, back for Fedosov. The shot deflected out in front, and they score between Moog's legs. The shot from the point. Deflected out in front. Watch Fedosov here as he winds up. He slides it along the ice. Moog is out where he should be, and there's a Soviet player comes in and just lays his stick on the puck that was shot purposely along the ice. Look at this. The back of his stick hit the ice first in order to keep it down, and the puck just slid along the ice, and great, great, great play. And that's why Fedosov is considered one of the best scoring defensemen, best playmaking defensemen in the Soviet Union hockey empire. He's something else. Smart. Vyaslav Baikov, credit for the goal. Early in the second period, the Oilers right back. Malinka falls on a loose puck that dribbled out in front. Not a glorious scoring opportunity for Edmonton. What a chance, nonetheless. It is 2-1 to one for the Central Red Army leading the Edmonton Oilers. And ahead on the Sports Network TSN football action, the All-America Bowl comes your way on Wednesday, December 31st, 8 o'clock Eastern, Georgia Tech and Michigan State. Two pretty good football teams line up in the All-America Bowl 
on TSN. Oilers have some pressure on in the Soviet zone now. McClellan is out in front. Couldn't get a pass from Silvanen. Now McClellan tries to feed it through for McSorley. He has the Oiler goal. And it's cleared out where Kevin Lowe claims it for Edmonton. Back for Lowe. Man on the right side. Silvanen. He's ridden out by Babinov. McClellan working in there with Silvanen. This is McClellan behind the Soviet goal. Still has it. Looks at that score. Silvanen waiting by the side of the net. But McClellan made the whole play possible. Well, we talk about smart plays. Many plays, skillful plays by the Soviets. Watch this. McClellan just out fought from behind the net. Read everybody watching him. Everybody on the ace except Silvanen, who anticipated that the pass was going to come in front of the net. He moved in, and there you see him. Scoring a very, very important goal. How about the supporting cast for this Edmonton Oilers? McClellan with a great big goal. McSorley with a goal. Or Zubinen. McClellan with a great play. McClellan made the play. Oh, no ever. question about it. A lot of hard work on that one to set up Zubinen out in front. Here's Huddy at the point. Shot deflected wide. Soviets start back. Drozdetsky couldn't take a pass. Now it comes to Drozdetsky at the line. Fires over on the right side for Zubin. 25. Zubin. Zubin lost it. Huddy claimed it. Played it ahead for Anderson, but it comes loose. Gusarov for the Soviets. Now Coffee. Coffee for the Oilers. Lost it. And this is Anderson. Anderson working against Drozdetsky. Oilers having difficulty getting it out of their own zone. Now it comes free to Gretzky. Gretzky down the right side. Man out in front. Gretzky circles the net. And backhands it through on the short side. Soviets again. This time Shepelev. Shepelev going in. Man open on the other side. And Moog. An enormous save. Andy Moog. How about this? How about this? Now there's a little action. Andy Moog has a Soviet shake in their head. It's a slow pass. Watch this. The fake, and you'll see Moog come up. But look at that great push off of his right leg, and he's able to stretch with the left leg and get it there just in time. Great, great save. Drodzetsky had the chance. And he put it upstairs. It's in. The only possible way it could have been stopped is for Andy Moog to get the pad along the ice, which he did do. That Drozdetsky is some pretty pretty good hockey player, I'll tell you that, Big John. Out there for the Soviets now, Tiamenov gets the draw right back. Moog, a pad save. And the rebound is cleared. No penalty. Or is there? No, there isn't. Gloved ahead. It was whistled down. The puck was gloved ahead. Another look. He just missed that save. There's the penalty. That's a bit of a dive, too, so we're even. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> hope he still got a penalty for that one. How about that Andy Moog? Takes one away from Drozdeski with his left leg and then right from the face off, uh, off the same fellow with his right leg. Great, great save. This is Tiumenov. Tried to get it through for Makarov. 24. Couldn't. Has to retreat behind his own line. Fedosov is there, long lead pass. And Kutov couldn't find enough skating room. Trailing on the play. See him in out the shot. Moog the save. Had to be offside by four feet. Soviets keep it in. This is Makarov getting set for the shot. That one blocked by Randy Gregg. Out in front. Moog goes down again. And blocked Kasatanov, who had skated out in front. And off the moorings, that's the reason for a stoppage in play. Dr. Randy Gregg played it smart. When he saw the puck, he missed it behind the goal line, went out in front of the net, and he just skated into the net and took it off his moorings. Yeah. There's the two-line pass. Look at this. All his feet were on side. If his feet count, fine. No doubt at all that both feet were one on the red line, uh, the other one on the offensive side of it, or defensive side of it. But when he received the pass, it was the stick was four feet in the offensive zone. But who cares? Nothing happened, except everybody got mad at it. 
2-2 in the second period. 12 minutes, 24 seconds to play. Oilers in control in their own zone. Costly mistake there by Kevin Lowe. He recovers fortunately as the Soviets keep it in. Can you Tav, number 15, working against Lowe. Now, this is Gerasimov, number 12. Napier working in along the boards. It comes to Kevin Lowe for the Oilers. Lowe banks it once off the boards. Tried to get it for Dave Hunter. Fogelin moving up for Napier. Back to Fogelin. Soviets another chance. Kamutov, 15. Back pass for Baikov. Baikov into the corner. Has it taken away by Fogelin and Lowe. Gerasimov. And now Baikov. Gerasimov once more. Has two Oilers to beat. Can't get around low. Hunter along the boards. It finally comes free. McTavish had a chance at it. Soviets back to the attack once more. Gerasimov into the middle for Kamutov. Soviets have the Oilers battled, bottled up in their own zone. Gerasimov got it behind the Oiler goal. Back to the line. And it skipped across. Offside against the Soviets at the Oiler line. The NHL Soviet Series. Okay, Carl. Five. Here with the Sports Network, TSN. We're even in the second period. John Wells along with Howie Meeker and Jim Van Horn at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. Soviets have outshot the Oilers 18 to 6 to this stage of the second period. We're almost at the midway mark. It is even on the scoreboard at two. Paul Coffey flipped it into the Soviet zone. McSorley in after it, number 33. Oilers now in possession in the central Red Army zone. McClellan can't get to it. McSorley overskated it. McClellan tries again. He's held along the board. Finally picked up by Vazilov for the Soviets. McClellan is down. Kept in. Shot from the point. That one off the post. The rebound. Great saves. But Lean, Leenkov. Well, Leenkov coming up with a big save and the rebound that came bouncing right out. Well, the fellow you looked at there makes a pretty good save here. Again, he's not challenging, and he's down unnecessarily. But look at he stacks the pads, and the Edmonton player was not able to get it up high. He went down in the first shot, shouldn't have, and almost paid the price on the second. Sergei Malinkov, 27 years of age. A winner in his first appearance in this tour in Los Angeles last evening. From the faceoff, Kasatanov. Got it to the line. It's out and across. Soviets quickly to the attack once more. Going right in. Moe came out and challenged the shooter that time as he cut down the angle on Shepelev. Out in front. Moe is down with Drozdetsky, number 13, standing in front. Moe had little choice. Well, here we want to show you the Soviets uh, creating a little open ice and uh, creating a pick at the same time. Just let it go a little bit further from here. Let it go, Carl. All right, stop it right there. Stop it right there. What's going to happen here is this player will come in and force the player to go back, but he'll create interference all the way. Now, look at this, how he takes him out. There's the open ice, and there's the pass, but the Edmonton defenseman cut across just in time to get a stick on it. That... Back to the live action after the faceoff in the Oilers' zone. Randy Gregg got it to the line, not across. Zubin had it. Well, the Soviets, penalty coming up. Two-two is the score. Nine minutes, 30 seconds to play in the second period. International Hockey on the Sports Network, TSN. Drozdetsky, two minutes for holding. Just watch this. Just reaches out right under the armpit. Oilers on the power play. This is Greg. Curry on the right side. <laughs> yeah. 
Here's Kevin Lowe for Curry. Curry having some difficulty. Over for Greg now on the right side. In for Gretzky. Polinkov comes out of his net, steers it around, and it's cleared down by Central Red Army. Well, here comes the artillery, Coffee. Give him the puck and let him go. That's it. Give him the puck. I'll skate. Minute 18 left in the power play. That's Anderson. Gretzky gets it up for Curry. Curry shot it just wide. And then backhanded the rebound out in front. Claimed quickly by the Soviets who start back. This is Makarov. Down the left side, Makarov. Pushed off the puck by Huddy. Soviets playing shorthanded. Krutov couldn't control it. Here's Coffey with Gretzky at the line. Coffey left it for Gretzky. He didn't think it was going that way. Krutov backhands it down. 41 seconds left in the Edmonton power play. Coffey copped it up. Soviets going in. Score! Bykov. Coffey made the miscue. Bykov walked in 19. Hogue almost got a piece of it. But again, there's no way in the world you allow that back man to handle the puck and attempt to make a pass from that position. It wasn't a good pass on Coffey's stick. Coffey has to be behind the pass, the passer in that instance. And uh, Bykov just went between the legs, found the five hole. It's a bad pass, but nevertheless, when you're making that type of a pass, whether you're a man short or five aside, folks, <laughs> the pass receiver is behind you. If he's behind you, then you have time to adjust for the bad pass. It is 3-2 now. Bykov giving the Soviets the lead once more. They have not trailed in this hockey game. The Oilers have come back to tie it twice. Edmonton McSorley offside at the Soviet line. Well, that's the type of goal that really costs the club when you have two of them uh, with as much skills as both these teams have here tonight. And uh, you get your goals on a power play and uh, even size. But when you have a power play and the opposition scores on you, that's the one that usually breaks your heart or ends up to be the winner in the long run. We'll see if that holds true tonight. Two in a row for Bykov. His second shorthanded and unassisted. Oilers still on a power play for another 13 seconds. They have not had good scoring opportunity. Randy Gregg got it from McClellan. McClellan tipped it into the Soviet zone. Back for it. Gusarov. This is Gregg pinching in. McSorley can't handle it for the Oilers. Back to the line. McClellan in for McSorley. Comes to McClellan again. McClellan behind the net out in front. Big save by Malinka. This is Suminen. Lost it. McSorley slips it in. And looking for a penalty against the Soviets. It did not come. McClellan upended out in front. Greg moving in. Good hit. But the Soviets dump it all the way down. Jackson touches. Face off. Goes back to the Soviet zone. Up to this point in the game. McClellan, Suman, and McSorley are head and shoulders the best uh, the best line for the Edmonton Oilers. And this pass goes to Suman. He picks it up. Uh, he'll get it just off the, the right, the right uh, post. And he makes two excellent plays, but he's not able to get it upstairs. That isn't what I was looking for. <laughs> That was McClellan being dumped out in front. The play the fans were looking for a penalty on. Slightly partisan crowd here at Northlands tonight, Howard. Hopefully. <laughs> a little more vocal than they are many NHL nights during the regular season. A race for this one. The Oilers win it. And there's an elbowing call coming up against Edmonton, I believe. Babinov of the Soviets is down back behind his goal. Victor Tikhanov looks down. Sergei Babinov. Hunter goes off. Babinov, the oldest player on the Soviet squad. Hunter has been a step ahead of the play and a step behind the play all night long, and he hasn't made bodily contact with anybody, so let's take a look at what he does here. How can that be elbowing? 
that. So I'd like to see that again. I'm not so sure that wasn't uh, anything but a fairly good check. The referee, Kerry Fraser, saw it in another way. I guess. Here's another angle. Thanks, fellas. Another angle. You looked a little higher from that ah, camera. Wow, that wasn't uh, any kind of a tough check at all. He just run him into the fence nice and gently, and the Soviet player hit his head in the glass. On the power play for the Soviets, to Menov at center 28 with Krutov on the left side. Makarov on the right wing. Fedosov for the Soviets. For Tia Menev. Now Krutov. Back for Tia Menev. Tia Menev working in. Plays it over to the other side. Man open at the point. That's Fedosov. Number two. Wide open back there. They go the other way. Right out in front. Moog. Blocked it. And it's steered aside by the Oilers. Soviets on a power play. Krutov. Back to the line. Fedosov. Back for Krutov. Into the slot and back for Fedosov who moves in. Plays it for Krutov. He's checked. Good play. The Oilers get it to the line. And across. Not for long as the Soviets cross the Edmonton blue line once more. In for Makarov, number 24. He comes out with it. Makarov back to the line. This is Krutov. Makarov for Fedosov. Oh. Fedosov moves in. Takes the shot. That one dinged off the post. Well, Fedosov is uh, doing here what he does, I guess, with the teams back in the Soviet Union. He's got the players uh, dipping a dive, and he moved in there, faked the shot, and everybody went down, and he passed it across. He's just a very, very skilled, very skilled hockey player, and that's the fellow I'm talking about right there, Fedosov. The more you see him play the point, the more you realize that he, by world standards, is a premier hockey player. 25 points in 20 games in the Soviet elite division, and he's a league all-star. Well, he, he does so many things out there. Uh, very, very skilled with the stick and smart with the head. And plays it tough with the body. And that's a rare combination to have all those assets. And using them. That's the key. Having them and using them. There's a fellow that has all the assets in the world. Number 99, Mr. Gretzky. What a hockey player. He's not that's, really been a dominant force in this hockey uh, game as yet, Howie. That's right. He lacks the one thing that... that uh, would make him really outstanding against the Soviet club, and that's just that extra step and speed. He's adequate, more than adequate, but against a club like this, he needs that extra step. Oof. Curry has trouble at his own blue line, but finds Gretzky at the Soviet line. Gretzky puts on the move. There's Curry going in. Oh! Slid it right across. Malinkov came out. Here's Curry for Gretzky. Couldn't get it through. 14 seconds left in the Soviet power play as Makarov crosses the line offside with Kasatanov. Now, what I was saying about, uh, that's Curry there a moment ago, but what I was saying about Gretzky, if he could move his feet like he moves the stick, if he could move his feet like he moves his head right here, look at this pass, just beautiful. He knew where he was, and Gretzky uh, put it, I think, maybe a foot or two ahead. It was on uh, Curry's skate, but had Curry stopped as he normally would, I uh, had to put that in a wide open net. But that uh, Gretzky is just a magician with his brain and also with the stick. Four minutes and 47 seconds to play in the second period. The Soviets lead the Edmonton Oilers three to two. And in six seconds, the Oilers will be back to full strength with Dave Hunter back from a two minute elbowing call. Gretzky in four checking, almost comes up with it. Soviets break out quickly. Gerasimov. Over for Baikov. Back for Baikov now. Man open right out in front. Moog stands his ground and on the rebound as well. Good effort by the Soviets. Great effort by Andy Moog. You can't turn your back on any hockey player at any league, particularly here against the Soviets. And you'll see Coffee do it twice here. He'll get this fellow off the puck. He'll come out and Moog will make just a great, great save and uh, was very fortunate on the rebound. But here it is again, just look at this. There was a little bit room up high on the short side as uh, the Soviet player started across in front of the net, but Andy Moog made another big save. Moog foiling Kamutov 15 and Baikov number 19. Face off in the Oilers zone. 
by Cobb. Losing the draw that time. It goes to Don Jackson of the Oilers. This is Kamutov. Back pass. Neatly done. Going in. Right out in front. And Kamutov had an open net. Couldn't find the, the handle on that one. Couldn't come up with it. Back to the line. Stelkov. The shot. Moe. The save. Kamutov just makes a great, great pass. And again, when you're at this position here, I kind of think you've got to go for the net. You've got to go to put it in. You, you don't make those fancy passes across in front of the net because if, you, if they're the least bit off, uh, nothing happens. There's a good backhand shot. Look, he hit the puck, had Moog down and out, had the ability to put it up on top, upstairs. Maybe it would have gone in. At least it would have been a shot in the net. But uh, he wanted to make it picture perfect, and uh, nothing really happened. Shepelev moves to center ice for the Soviets with Drodzetsky, 13, on the right wing, and Zubin, 25, on the left side. McTavish lost the drive, but the Oilers gained control as Moog played it for Kevin Lowe into the neutral area once more. That's on the right side. Here come the Soviets once more. This is Shepelev, 27 with it. McTavish now claims it for the Oilers. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. And Anderson couldn't make it work that time. Got a pass out in front. Here's McTavish for the Oilers. McTavish in behind for Anderson. Anderson against Shepelev. Can't control. Shepelev still being shadowed by Anderson. Now it comes loose. Anderson has it. Plays it back to the line. No one there for the Oilers. And with 3.06... Remaining in the second period, the Oilers regroup back behind their own line. Craig McTavish for Anderson. Anderson, the shot. The cleanup. The save. Sergei Malinov. He's been a busy man. He gets his stick caught in the net. Look, he gets up and he can't fish it out again. <laughs> the tape's in. Pull it in. You ought to heck with the dog, I think. I can play just as well with that, which is rightfully so. Nothing came of that opportunity. Makarov for the Soviets. One man to beat. Takes the shot. Moved the save. Huddy was covering on Makarov. Makarov really played that smart. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Huddy. He moved to the inside, straightened out, moved to the outside again, and uh, got Huddy to move the stick board and then shot the puck at the net and forced Moog to make a save. Just watch him here. There he makes one move just with the body, takes it way outside. Uh, Huddy was able, fortunately, to get his stick on it and change the direction of it, but that's all you do, one-on-one. -on -one if you can Give the guy a move. If you don't beat him, shoot it at the net. Well, the Soviets, Tiumenov with Makarov and Krutov. The forward front, their best line. Copy, difficulty along the boards for the Oilers. Finally, gets it free for Suman and Sumanen. Had it taken away by Krutov. Now Copy, lost it out front. Moved the save out in front. The red light is on. Do they count it a goal or not? Another costly mistake for the Oilers in their own zone. The net is off its moorings. The light went on. I've constantly both been talking about the Soviets flooding the zone, flooding the zone. And on this goal here, this is what they did out on the blue line. This is a start of a, that's a bad pass, really. And you don't make silly little passes like that in the middle of the rink. You, you take it bodily out of the trouble area, or you pass it into that uh, corner. You do anything with it but make a six-foot pass to someone standing still that far back. That's the second goal tonight, that uh, very, very poor thinking, uh, very poor philosophy, and very poor skills, really, uh, have led to goals by the Soviet Union. Makarov makes it 4-2 for the Soviets. Two costly errors for the Oilers, cost them goals. One by Baikov, one by Makarov. It is 4-2 with two minutes left to play in the second period. This is McSorley to the line. Dumps it into the corner, McClellan is after it. Kosovov. One thing I've noticed really more than anything else tonight by the Soviet club, and I've uh, 
mentioned a half a dozen things is they do not go to the attack really until they get the puck out of the blue line and this I uh, was just thinking a moment before Makarov got that very important fourth goal for the Soviet club but uh, half the uh, Edmonton Oiler forwards were standing out in the center ice area waiting for two guys to be three guys to get get it up to them and get on the attack and the Soviet Union put the zone come up with a puck uh, and then it's a two-on-two -two situation and boom one missed yeah. units in the net you've got to come back and never go on the attack until you get the puck out of the blue line power play for the Oilers coming up as Gosarov goes out for cross-checking face off in the Soviet zone now's the time to make the power play work Howie this late stage 144 to play second period Oilers down by two. McClellan along the boards. McSorley back to the line. That's Curry playing the point. Yari Curry is back there. Gretzky at the other point. McSorley trying to get it back for Gretzky. He can't keep it in. And the Soviets, Baikov, 19, races Yari Curry for the puck. Gretzky over skating it just got it out across the line the back pass though goes to Yari Curry and Curry can't get across the Soviet line Oilers on the power play into the final minute of the second period this is Gretzky takes the pass across the line plays it back the shot the save the rebound Gretzky comes up with it again this is Curry Yari Curry working in. Oilers on the power play to the side of the net. And it comes loose. The Soviets claim it quickly. And here comes Makarov. Makarov being trailed by Curry. Curry finally hauls him down. And a penalty coming up. Makarov. Here the Soviets go in again. The backhand shot by Baikov. The Oilers very disorganized in their power play. And a penalty coming up to Yari Curry. Makarov had the big chance. Curry hauled him down. Gee whiz, Curry is known uh, by our standards as a pretty good skater. Not sensational, but Makarov and he started out almost head and head. And there again, uh, there's a great, great save uh, by Belenkov. But Makarov is really, really moving here. And Curry gives him one hook and gives him to catch up and gives him the second hook. But the Soviet players stayed on that puck and stayed on it uh, very, very determinedly. Just about had play. a chance yeah. to go to the backhand. They are strong skaters. You've got, got to really admire their, their simple skills, their skating, their puck handling, and their mental skills, and their discipline now. They're, they're much more disciplined behind the blue line and on offense than I've ever seen them before. Central Red Army leading the Edmonton Oilers 4-2. to two. Into the final 10 seconds now of the second period. Huddy to the Soviet line, gets across. This is McTavish. McTavish goes wide, trying to work it out for a shot. Two seconds left, got it back to the point. No one was there for the Oilers. We'll go to the dressing room after two, trailing by two. Mistakes, okay. mistakes. Well, I, I think the philosophy perhaps is a mistake. You have to know the Soviet club by... By the reputation is not going to give you any more than four or five six good scoring chances all night long so you have to match them on defense you have to match them on puck control you don't think that Gretzky Curry and Anderson and particularly Anderson has been very disappointing tonight but they're going to go they're not going to go out there and get more than one goal maybe one and a half two at the very very most so uh, if you're going out there to think that the Edmonton Oilers are going to get 1,400 scoring chances like they do night after night in the NHL, that scoring a pair of goals, his first one coming at 4:54, Ramos Suman, and then scored less than a minute later to tie the game at two. But Baikov with an unassisted shorthanded goal at 11:56 made it three to two. Then Sergei Makarov, another unassisted goal at 17:40, uh, made the goal score four to two. Shots on goal now. The Red Army over the Oilers 16 to nine in that. Second Second period of play for a two-period total of 26 to 13. There was a PM Eastern. That should be an outstanding hockey game. Now for the third period play, here's John Wells and Howie Meeker. Well, Howie, what do the Oilers have to do to get back into this game and quickly? Obviously, they need a little more effort and a little more production from the big line. Gretzky Anderson and Yari Curry. 
Well, I think the guy that really has to take it and do what he does best, and uh, I always seem to kill him. I told you earlier on a great skater cop he was, great puck handler, good playmaker. He's been uh, plays well when he wants to behind the blue line. He's done nothing. He's played terrible behind the blue line, but he has to carry the puck. He has to lead them out of their own zone, and he has to uh, beat somebody with his legs, uh, which he can do and get some Soviet players going after him. And, yes, Anderson has to do something. Uh, again, uh, you never know about... Uh, Anderson, when he comes to play, luck out. There's none any better uh, playing his position, which is all over the cotton picking ice. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the guy with the greatest, the guy with the greatest balance, and the guy with all kinds of scoring uh, skills uh, hasn't done anything tonight. And uh, there's the Soviet player with a penalty. Well, there are two players in the penalty box. Gusarov for the Soviets is in for the next 16 seconds, but Curry for the Oilers for tripping is in for a minute 42. So they'll start four skaters aside, but the Soviets will quickly move to a power play. And there's the head coach of the Soviet hockey team, Viktor Tikhanov. He's got to be smiling tonight. The team has played quite well. They have kept the Oilers off their game. Kevin Lowe for the Oilers to start the third period off. Banks it off the boards, carries it across the line himself. Gretzky goes in after it, beating him to the puck is Kasatonov. And the Soviets are back at full strength. And on the power play, this is Fedosov. Number two, a minute 21 remaining in the Soviet power play with Yari Kuri in the penalty box. Kasatonov ahead on the right side. For Krutov, Krutov number nine, cruises in across the other line, plays it to the corner, takes a return pass. Krutov gets it back to the line. The shot, and it's deflected high, and amongst the spectators, a shot from Kasatonov. Well, he can shoot them just the same as number two, his defense partner in the power play, uh, Fedezov. He just laid that puck along the ice. It was directed at his teammate's stick, and his teammate did get his plate of his stick on it, but it went up in the air. They're pretty crafty. Gee, they pick well. Uh, I, I would think they, the Europeans, more than anybody else, introduced us to or forced us to uh, the pick plays in, in hockey, and you watch them tonight. Whew, goodness gracious. Curry is out for another one minute, three seconds. The Oilers trail Central Red Army of the Soviet Union, four to two. Third grade action just underway. And the Soviet power play continues. Fedosov, shadowed by Anderson, plays it ahead on the right side. Goes too far, the pass intended for Makarov, number 24. Whistle down, it'll go back to the Soviet zone for a face-off. I think the other thing you have to uh, look for as you're watching this game at home, folks, is that the, the Soviet team try to and usually are successful at moving the puck to the fastest skater on the ice or the fastest player on their side. They don't, for very seldom, give to anybody standing still. They'll tic-tac-toe it around, and all of a sudden it's on somebody's stick who's on the bill daily. Gretzky into the corner after the face-off against two Soviet players. Gretzky has a broken stick. Soviets on the power play for 31 seconds longer as Krutov flips it into the Oilers' zone. Moog can't come out to trap that one. McTavish played it to the line, couldn't get it out. Moog out of his net once more for Kevin Lowe. Lowe fires it around. McTavish can't poke it out across the line. Kept in there by Fedosov. Back to Fedosov, who goes to the other side. In close now for Krutov. Krutov. Had it go off a stick. Lowe was down. It deflected wide of Andy Moog in the Oiler goal. Four seconds left from the penalty now. And that'll bring Yari Curry back after this faceoff. There's Craig McTavish. And for you folks who wonder how he's doing out here in Edmonton, he is just playing great hockey. Uh, I've watched him pretty closely in the games that I've seen. And he's as harder working player as there is in the ice. He wants to make this club very well. But besides that, he's not a great skater, mind you, but he's got a low panic level. He hangs on to the puck to, the, to make a play. He'll take punishment to make a play. And he is playing extremely well here. Very, very smart, very courageous. Baikov for the Soviets at center, number 19, with Gerasimov and Kamutov, his wingers. Gerasimov on the right side. Face off to Moog's left. And the Oilers are back to full strength as Curry skates into the play. Long pass goes all the way down. Gretzky trying to cut it off from the other side. Couldn't get to it ahead of Malinkov, the Soviet netminder. Now the Oilers control behind the net. 
Gretzky flipped it out in front. Claimed there by Kamutov, number 15. Soviets to the Euler line. Kamutov has it taken off his stick. This is McSorley for Edmonton. Weak backhand into the Soviet zone. 4-2, Central Red Army leading the Edmonton Oilers. Charlie Huddy for McSorley along the boards. In for McClellan. McClellan is taken out of the play. Bykov. This is McClellan for the Oilers. McClellan, number 24, took a pass from Suminen, flipped it out in front of the Soviets, start back. Kamutov lost it. Gerasimov had difficulties. And well, I don't know. Are coming up. It can't be too many players on the ice, sure, but the guy has to be at the bench and out of play. The only one player touched the puck, and that was the puck carrier. A few moments ago, there's Tikhanov. He's complaining. I think he's got a legitimate beef anyways. Uh, Paul Coffey, as I said earlier, has to do what uh, he does best. And the other thing is, is, on the point, on the attack, he pinches more and better than anybody else in the game. And for the first time in this contest a few moments ago, went in deep into the hash marks uh, adjacent to the parallel or to the face-off spot, threw the puck in front of the net, and it was almost tipped in. He has to do that do it constantly. Now, mind you, if you, mind you if count them. Count the red shirts, Howie. There's, there's a couple there. out there, Howie. Yeah, there's all kinds at the bench, though, but they're, they're, these two at the, at the bench, they're certainly out of play. There's no doubt about that. Had any of the ones in the vicinity of the bench touched the puck other than the puck carrier? Sure, too many men on the ice. The crowd called that penalty anyways. 17-14 to play in the third period. The Soviets lead the Edmonton Oilers 4-2. These teams are quite familiar with each other. <laughs> I was just going to say, Victor's writing it down. That's the last. Uh, that's the last game <laughs> that official's going to do in this series. Too many men at 2:46. Oilers power play. Gretzky, Curry, Anderson, with Huddy and Coffee at the blue line. Anderson pushed off the puck by Fedosov. See that Fedosov knew his teammate was coming. All he did is held Anderson against the boards and pushed the puck out for his teammate to come and pick it up. They have good communications. How he lost it to Kutov. Gretzky reclaimed it. Here's Paul Coffey. Coffey to the line. Went to the open side with a weak pass. Soviets start right back. Makarov 24. Moog the save. It was likely wide of the target. Moog held on anyway. Well, again, Coffey did what he does best up through center ice. And then he got to the blue line and uh, he quit skating. He's got to go all the way. The fancy passes, the guys coming late, the Soviets have got them copper fast. They pick up the late coming man time after time after time. Uh, once in a while, they miss their only human. But there's nobody open. You've got to beat somebody in order to create that open man. Coffee didn't beat anybody. Oilers on the power play tip dangerously out in front and claimed by Makarov for the Soviets as the Oilers have difficulty getting this power play in motion. Now skate, skate. That's it, go. Coffee for Anderson. Anderson dumps it in. Coffee pinching in. Comes up with it for the Oilers. Coffee over to the open man. Shot blocked by Fedosov. Huddy shot that time. Gretzky behind the net to the side of the net. This is Yari Curry for Edmondson. Back to the line. No one there. 57 seconds left in the Oiler manpower advantage. Coffee has it poked off his stick. Anderson working along the boards against Gamayev. 18. Makarov for the Soviets against Gretzky. Fedosov now. And back for Fedosov. Vasiliev, 23, has it taken away by Gretzky. Gretzky going in. Tried to backhand it out in front for Curry. It didn't work. Lowe kept it in at the line. Shot right on. Not a difficult save. Came through a crowd, though. I thought he had to be very, very alert to make that save. Here's Gretzky. Let it go. Across two lines, so Gretzky let it go into the Soviet zone. As Kevin Lowe touches it, icing called against the Soviets with 15 minutes and nine seconds to go. 
Sorry, no icing call. McClellan. Sumanen. He's dumped off the puck. Craig moving in. This is McSorley for the Oilers. Tipped out in front. The save by Malinkov. Wasn't difficult that time. Soviets across their line. Back to full strength. Randy Gregg for Paul Coffey. Coffey into the corner and couldn't do anything with it at all. Soviets start back. This is Drozdetsky. Ahead for Shepelev. Good opportunity. There he did what we talked about earlier. Just made that one move inside, outside. Take it as far away from the body as you can and shoot it. And he hit the post. If it was on, it was in. Soviets pinching in. Out in front, McTavish made the good defensive play for the Oilers. This is Shepelev now, 27. Had it taken away by McTavish. Huddy moves in. Oilers led by Napier. McTavish couldn't get it at the side of the net. And Shepelev for the Soviet starts back down the left side. This is Shepelev with help. Balls as cry as he crosses the line. And that's McTavish. <laughs> His crest was a better part of Valor there. I'll tell you, Kevin Lowe had them all lined up, and he did a quarterback sneak. Mark Napier. Banked it off out in front. Fedosov taken out neatly by Kevin Lowe. Loose in the Oilers zone once more. And fired just wide by Kamutov, 15. Kamutov dumping it into the Edmonton zone once more with 13.06 to play in the third period. Low for the Oilers. Headman pass for Gretzky. Not quite. Gretzky got it out in front, and there Kasatenov started the Soviets back. Two on one for the Soviets. Dangerous play here. They move in, moving right out in front. The shot fired just wide by Gerasimov. The two on one played almost perfectly until the shot was taken. Petasov clears it in. Moog sets it up. They're doing a pretty good job on Gretzky. Now it comes loose for Gretzky. Takes the pass from Anderson. Gretzky moving in, takes the shot. Couldn't get much on it. Cleared out in front. The shot fired just wide by Jackson. 29 for the Oilers. And there's a penalty called by Kerry Fraser. 4-2. to two, The Soviets leading the Edmonton Oilers. 12 minutes, 16 seconds to play in the third period. Bo's getting a little high. As Kasatanov goes off for two minutes, the Oilers go to the power play, and there's the left elbow sliding in. So the Oilers with a power play. Have McClellan out there at center. He wins the draw back for Coffey. Coffey moving in. Paul Coffey, number seven with a puck. Had it roll off his stick. Babinov. The Soviets claimed it, but couldn't get it out. Oilers on the power play. It's kept in by Sumanen. This is McClellan with Coffey. Coffey the shot. And the net off at Boring. No goal. The red light did not go on as the Oilers moved in and had a pretty good scoring opportunity. But Malinka made the save. Well, the Edmonton Oilers, as we all realize, could have used that goal. And there you see number seven, Coffey, up where he should be all night long. Sure, let's see that again. There's the save. And he goes down. And that's off. And there's Coffee putting it in. Yep. Yeah. Good call. No goal. Well, that fellow you're looking at has had a miserable night, both with his legs and with the stick. He's uh, time and time again had the puck and moved it from his forehand to his backhand and lost it and lost it and lost it. And constantly got his trouble his team in trouble on, on offense and just been horrible behind the blue line as well. Oilers continue on the power play for another minute 39 seconds with a face off in the Soviet zone. Coffee is at the point. Gretzky has the other point. And the Oilers are trying Suman and McSorley and McClellan as the forward front. 
Now and Gretzky moves in to take the face as off. As they should do. As we've said uh, halfway through this game, that's been head and shoulders their best line, skill-wise and work-wise and productive-wise. Oops. McClellan couldn't control it from the face off out in front. It is kept in at the line by Sumanen. This is Gretzky behind the Soviet goal. Cleared it right out in front. Neatly done. Sumanen set it up. There's the shot. It ricochets wide. The shot from Paul Coffey. Here's McSorley. Has Coffey wide open. And Gretzky out in front of the net, too, as the Soviets have two players along the boards. It worked for the Soviets as it was cleared down the ice, and Sumanen couldn't keep it in. See how they flood the zone? They had all four red shirts in the third of the ice, and there were two Edmonton Oilers home free in the slot. They never did get the puck. Here's Gretzky. Good chance here. Oh, brilliant save by McLeanoff. Soviets have an opportunity here. This is Makarov. Makarov going in. McSorley trailing. Now another Soviet comes in. Mo, a brilliant save on Kutov. Soviets are shorthanded. McClellan. Copy. Back for McClellan. McClellan running out of gas. Suman and back pedals along with Yari Curry. And this is Krutov with a puck for the Soviets. Oops. Oh, lost his balance. That one ricocheted out in front. Could have been dangerous. Had the Soviets not been playing shorthanded and playing back a little bit. Kamutov, 15, got it out in front. Now Anderson and Gretzky. This is Gretzky. Missed the back pass for Anderson. Here's Curry. But an oiler was trapped offside as Curry had to circle back. Curry got it to the line and fired it in. Soviets kill off the penalty. And are back to full strength as Moog bounces it off the boards. Comes to Gretzky and to Anderson. Anderson with Gretzky. Gretzky for Curry. And Curry couldn't get to it. Kasatanov, number six, made a good play for the Soviets. Well, I've said a half a dozen times, they're just so good and being drilled. They're, I guess someone's done their homework on this Edmonton Oil Club. Pick up the last man. And it's usually coffee or it's usually Curry. And all night long, they've been picked up and picked up well. So chances at both ends, but the score remains 4-2. Central Red Army leading the Edmonton Oilers. Gretzky has a great scoring chance here, but watch Malinkov. He winds up, but look, how he didn't back up. See how high he was? He's been watching up the other end. He went down a little early on it, but was able to get his hand up as it was going into the top left-hand corner. But he was out high as Andy Moog has been high and playing brilliantly all night long. Nine minutes, 39 seconds left in the third period. The Oilers down by two. Napier, good pass. McTavish has Hunter on the other side. Hunter couldn't get the shot away. Defensively, number three, Starikov for the Soviets. McTavish had to hang him under the puck there. There's no way in the world. He had to have the defenseman come with him. It's a two-on-one break, and he just uh, went wide and threw the puck across to Hunter, and the defenseman made one move, and he was over there covering him. McTavish had to go wide, had to try to beat the guy, had to draw him to him, and then give it. He didn't come to him, go in and put the doggone thing in the net. I think these guys are not used to a, a game with uh, this high a pace. And I'll tell you something, the fellow you're looking at there has never had so much ice time as he's getting tonight. 99% <laughs> uh, of the time, it's uh, Gretzky's line and uh, Gretzky with another line and then Messier's line and you're in trouble. But not tonight, they've handled the big guns extremely well. McTavish at center gets the draw back for Jackson. He fired it wide. Big shot, big drive. Randy Gregg moves in to keep it in the Soviet zone. Not for long. This is Jackson in a race. Gamayev beat him to it. Gamayev cleared it out in front. Vasiliev couldn't come up with it. Now Napier leads the Euler attack to the line and across. He's not going to get through the Soviet defense like that. Gamayev for Vasiliev. Vasiliev fakes the shot, tried to work himself around. Huddy got Moog out of position. The Oilers recover and regroup. Huddy, pass on the right side. Hunter slipped it through. Now Hunter kicks it across the line. Soviets dump it right out. Coffee leaving it for Huddy. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to play. Third period. 4-2, Soviets leading the Edmonton Oilers. McTavish back for Huddy. Huddy. Lift one in there, and it was easily handled by Malinkov. For the face-off in the Soviet zone. 
Well, lots ahead on the Sports Network, TSN. The NBA continues on Friday, January 3rd, 8 o'clock Eastern, Milwaukee Bucks, Washington Bullets. All on the Sports Network. Lots of hockey coming up as we move with this series to Calgary in two days. Sunday night, the Moscow Dynamo and the Calgary Flames at 8 o'clock Eastern time, live from the Saddle Dome in Calgary. McClellan working along the boards. It comes out to Coffey, who dumps it back in for McClellan. Fedosov can't hold it. McSorley back, cleared out in front. Good chance for the Oilers. But it was Simonon who couldn't quite tip it and gain control. Now Makarov starts back. Makarov, one man and a goalie to beat, drops it back. Krutak scores. Oh. That's how it's oh. done. Oh. You'll not see it any nicer than that, folks, even coming out of their own end. I think it was Makarov finally put it in. But just watch this. He'll draw a player to him, cut to the middle. There's the drop pass. Now he'll go wide and lay it right across. Oh, just beautiful. And it was just a nice teed up shot, an effortless shot. Coming out of there is the key. Here, it's a one on nobody. Okay, or one on one. Now it's a two on one. Now it's a three on two. And that third guy is just home free. They have unbelievable mobility, good puck handling, and they know what they're doing on offense. Gorgeous goal. Gorgeous. Krutov. Gives the Soviets a 5-2 to two lead. Seemingly insurmountable with 7 minutes and 37 seconds to play. The Oilers have not been at their best. I suppose we should mention a couple of Oilers who are missing action. Players like Mark Messier, Mike Krushelniski, Issa Tikkanen. And the first two players are uh, big Paul parts Coffey, of this Edmonton Paul Oilers Coffey, team. Glenn Anderson, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, Gary Curry. They're missing action too tonight. Copy a shot though. Malinov, Malinov made the save. McSorley working along the boards. The Soviets come out with it this time. It's Gerasimov, number 12, still hanging on, headed back to the line. Gerasimov now to the Oiler line and across, got by McSorley, couldn't get by Charlie Huddy. Five to two, the Soviets lead the Edmonton Oilers. The Central Red Army team, number one in the Soviet Union. Kevin Lowe tried to slide it through for Sumanen. It didn't work. Soviets quickly to the attack once more. Falling as he crossed the line, Baikov. Here comes Curry, he's got Gretzky, takes the shot. Malinkov, the save. Vogelin can't keep it in as the Soviets gulf it all the way down. And icing should be called as Kevin Lowe touches the puck with six minutes and 30 seconds to play third period. I'm beginning to wonder what kind of conclusions you can draw about this tonight. Obviously, uh, the Soviet teams have more skill, deeper skill. Uh, they skate so well. Uh, uh, there are stars on the Edmonton Oilers, then there's a supporting cast, and the supporting cast tonight, because uh, of a couple of outstanding efforts, uh, probably being as good as anybody wearing a white jersey. But certainly, the depth of their skating, the depth of their puck handling, and their philosophy, their theories, uh, their discipline, has, has just been so much better than the Edmonton Oilers. Drozetsky got around one Oiler defender, tried to clear it out front. That play was foiled. Here's Anderson for Edmonton. For Curry. Curry tried to return it to Anderson, and the Soviets take over. Gusarov into the central ice area. Anderson, one more try. Gretzky outside at the Soviet line. Well, there's a guy who's uh, had a bad night, like a lot of people have, but uh, normally... Uh, he's just a heck of a hockey player. He's got a good wheels as anybody in the league. Uh, better balance probably than anybody else. I've seen him score goals standing on his head uh, or over on his ankles. And uh, he can score goals. And when he comes to play, when he's right, <laughs> he'll pluck you. I'll tell you, he is something else. But he, in of all fairness to him, he hasn't played for a lot, a couple of weeks. But he's practiced uh, with the club. And uh, he's against uh, probably as good a club team as there is in the world. So... Chance for the Soviets here, going right in, they score! Veselov beats Andy Mould for the sixth time. 
And boy, they can score quickly. Oh, they can. They, they just, don't miss they the just, golden opportunity. All right, here's the pass. Look at it. It hits the stick, but the Vassell picks it up and takes one look there, one look, and he sees where Moog is, and Andy had to be coming out a little more. There wasn't very much room, but he picked it. He had a pretty good angle right here. There's the pass to the open man, and that's their key to the skating man as well. He moved the puck from the toe of his stick onto the heel and let it go, and you got to say it's a good shot and a good pass, but again, the key is they get it to someone who's moving, who's skating. Six to two now, 5.49 to play. Third period. Oilers in top against the Central Red Army. Back to the line now in the Soviet zone, deflected out in front. That shot from Jackson into the corner after it. Mike Rogers, Rogers for McTavish. McTavish can't get anywhere with it. Look at him for the zone. Look at there, and they come, come up with the puck. And the Soviets to the other line once more. Vasiliev, and it's offside as Vasiliev just a stride ahead. Kasatanov was offside. The NHL Soviet Series 85 continues on the Sports Network, TSN. Plans Coliseum in Edmonton, Alberta, the Edmonton Oilers. In difficulty, to say the least, against Central Red Army of the Soviet Union. 6-2 to two now with just over five minutes to play in the third period. Coffey trying to get the Oilers out of their zone. McSorley takes the pass on the right side and just dumps it in. The Oilers have been content to do that much of the evening. Well, they couldn't come up with a cotton pick and puck if they had 10. Just watch what happens here when you shoot it in. And that's something that all of a sudden just dawned on me. And I haven't seen the Soviet team shoot the puck in yet, folks. A little something going on behind the Soviet net there is Kutov. Now takes it across the Oiler line. Takes the shot. Play broken up by Sumanen, who starts up. McSorley trailing. Sumanen. Can't get around the defense. Gusarov for the Soviets. Got it to the line. Not quite out. Backhanded in by Charlie Huddy. Loose out in front, but the Soviets clear quickly. Diamenov, number 28, gets it over on the left side. At the other line and across. Gusarov finally lost it. Kevin Lowe claimed it. This is Curry. He's got Gretzky out there. The pass just failed to materialize as far as the Oilers were concerned. But part of the story tonight, Howie, the Oiler passing game has just been off a little bit, hasn't it? That's right. There's absolutely no doubt about that at all. I've not seen the Oilers handle the puck. There's Gretzky out in front. Tried the backhand. Anderson picked up the rebound. Six to three, but there's a long way to come back for the Edmonton Oilers. Gretzky, that patented move out in front. Anderson had the rebound and beat Molina, Molinka. Well, Molina comes, uh, will make a great save here in Gretzky, but he's down again. And now look at Anderson. Anderson cuts across. He has one skate on the ice, does a pivot. Now Gretzky hangs on, hangs on, comes out in front. There's the backhand, and uh, Molina makes the save. Anderson outfought his check, picked up the puck, and Mike, I've seen him do so many times in this building and all over the league. Uh, do a fancy spinorama or on one skate uh, and put the puck in the net. He's got, as I said, uh, often, very often tonight, his balance on skates is amazing. Six to three now. 335 to play. But his effort tonight, his physical effort and his, his skill effort hasn't uh, been close to his normal performance. Oilers moving in with a little more enthusiasm now. McTavish has difficulties behind the net. Napier can't get to it. And here come the Soviets once more. A long pass on the right side. Gerasimov. Soviets circling. Defense moving in. Loose to the Soviets. This is Gerasimov again, number 12. Somebody better finish a check on those red turkeys out there. I'll tell you something. They're going to be in trouble. You can't force them off the puck and not stay with them. Hunter ahead for Napier at the line. He couldn't get anywhere. My goodness, goodness. They escaped to open ice and put the puck in open ice extremely well. Coffey tries it for the Oilers now to the line. Just got out of the way of a check. Six to three. Oilers trailing the Soviets, this Central Red Army team. And you were right, Howie. They don't look very tired. And we're playing in Los Angeles last night. Oh, 
Drodzetsky. Left it there for Shepelev, 27. Soviets clear it to the line. It goes all the way down. Malinka. Out to set it up, plays it ahead on the right side. It is now back for Babinov, number four. Good check for McClellan. Zubin. And Shepelev now, 27. McSorley for the Oilers, for Gretzky. Lots of ice. Gretzky around one man, Starikov. Over for Sumanin on the left wing, and that play didn't quite click for Gretzky or Sumanin. Here's Kevin Lowe. Lowe tried to feed it through for Curry. That not quite. Vogelin banking it off the boards for Gretzky. Gretzky trying to feed it through for Anderson. Soviets right back. Vasiliev, number 23, checked at the Edmonton line by Curry. Now a minute 17 to play, third period. Vasiliev couldn't take the pass, but Gamayev carried it in. Gamayev paid the price. Jackson took him out solidly into the boards. Gretzky chops it out, can't get it across the line. Uh, trickles across. Vasilov, number 11. Soviets back to the Euler line and working in the shot. Moog the save. That time on Gamayev, number 18. Here's Gretzky. One last chance for the Oilers to make it a little more respectable. They trail by three. Down to 30 seconds left in the period and the hockey game. Did you see that pass a moment ago? Just something else. Kutov to, to Timonen. Soviets to the line once more. Kasatenov takes the shot. Mode the save. He had nowhere to go with it. So he held on. With 16 seconds to play. There'll be a face-off in the Oilers' zone. And that man, Viktor Tikhanov, has to be pleased with the results of his North American tour so far. How would you like to have the problems he's got with all that <laughs> skill? That's like Len Sather having problems in the National Hockey League. they got to enjoy life. It's uh, great fun for them to be involved in the game with all the skills that... Uh, they have at their command and normally when the Edmonton Oilers skills are gone look out they do the same thing to teams in the National Hockey League that uh, the Soviets are doing to them tonight now they know how it feels time running out 15 seconds to play the shot Moog is bounced on his backside but the shot didn't get through that time Hunter goes to the far side Napier gets across the line feeds it through for McTavish and he couldn't control it that's going to be the old hockey game as the Edmonton Oilers go down to the feet in a hockey game where a few Oiler mistakes cost them dearly. Malinkov, Sergei Malinkov, has won twice in a row in North America over Los Angeles last night and over the defending Stanley Cup champions this evening, both by three goal margins. Well, you saw the game played this evening, folks, as it should be played. Uh, a team with uh, four lines and of skilled hockey players, and the same on defense. All skate extremely well, all handle the puck, and all uh, very well disciplined. That's the key to me, how disciplined they were. They played on defense like they had to, and on offense like they can. Central Red Army coming up with a 6-3 to three victory over the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers a little off their game tonight, to say the least. Without Andy Moog, it might have been much worse. The Oilers may point to a few injuries to say they are not the hockey team that they will be a couple of weeks from now when the likes of Mark Messier get back. There were a lot of uh, errors out there as far as the Oilers were concerned. And you see the salute from Central Red Army as they walk away for their second victory on the North American Tour. Sergei Malinkov has his second win in North America. The Oilers outshot 32 to 24. The NHL Soviet Series, 85 on the Sports Network. We'll be back for a recap after this.